Guys, what is good? The Daily Stack, day 20. Here we are. We are good to go. We are going to be talking about this little capsule called EFA. So look, guys, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> this took me all day and yesterday to get some information written down. This is going to be a scripted video. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump into it so, so that way I don't make this video too long and just list everything off about uh, the EFA, essential fatty acid capsule that you take in the daily stack. So the list goes as follows. You're going to be getting your vitamin E, your CLA complex, your GLA complex, your ALA complex, and then your EPA and your DHA. Other ingredients, you're going to get gelatin. Um, in parentheses, it says bovine. So there's the technicality there. Okay, essential fatty acids or EFAs are fatty acids that humans and other animals must ingest because the body requires them for good for good health but cannot synthesize them. The term essential fatty acid refers to fatty acids required for biological processes but does not include fats that only act as fuel. So we'll go ahead and get into vitamin E. Vitamin E, D-alpha tycosiferol acetate, or I may be saying, or acetate. I may be saying that wrong. So if I slaughter these names, I just apologize in advance and I'll probably stick with the abbreviations. Um, vitamin E is naturally uh, found in foods and is naturally food in various, is naturally found in various foods. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is known to be a fat soluble antioxidant that has the capability to neutralize endogenous, endogenous, free radicals. The biologic action of vitamin E consequently contributes to generate ongoing interest and in study in whether or not it is an antioxidant. Its antioxidant abilities may be used to prevent slash treating a number of different conditions like cardiovascular disease, ocular conditions, diabetes, cancer, and more. So that's that for vitamin E. It's also great for your skin too. So a lot of these complexes, I'm going to just say this now, especially with just essential fatty acids, it's good for your skin overall. So you can never get enough of it, I, I think, in my personal opinion. A CLA complex, or conjugated leo, uh, linoleic acid. It's an omega-6 fatty acid. The main dietary source of CLA are found in dairy and beef. Many people who take CLA believe it helps with weight loss, and heart health. It has been known to help with exercising while using it. One factor being it help, uh, <clears throat> it could help with reducing body fat and improve lean body mass, which is the ratio of fat to body weight. So essentially, you're lifting, doing something similar to bodybuilding. You can help in that aspect. As for heart health, it has been known to help with arteriosclerosis, or hardening of the arter arteries, from plaque buildup. So it cleans plaque from your arteries, to sum that up. Okay, GLA, or the GLA complex, is gamma <laughs> linoleic <-linic> acid. <laughs> it is an omega-6 fatty acid. It is a fatty substance found in various plant seed oils, such as borage oil and primrose oil. It specifically targets conditions that affect the skin, including systematic sclerosis, psoriasis, and eczema. It's the most I could find on it. So a lot of these are just summaries, but at the same time, I'm trying to give out as many facts as I can about each ingredient. So bear with me. If you're still curious about it, uh, go ahead and look it up for yourself, or I can leave you guys a link down below if you guys send me some comments in the video. Thanks. ALA complex, alpha... Linolenic acid is a type of omega-3 fatty acid found in plants. It is found in flaxseed oil, canola, soy, perilla, and walnut oils. Walnut oils. <clears throat> it is similar to the omega-3 fatty acids that are in fish oil, EPA, and DHA. So there's similarities in between these uh, ingredients. A lot of similarities. I was really surprised when I was sitting down and doing the research. It is used to be converted into EPA and DHA to be utilized in the body for something other than energy. So it actually can't be synthesized unless if... 
unless if it's actually converted. So it needs to be converted into e, EPA or DHA for it to actually work in the body. <clears throat> it is not converted to EPA or DHA. It is simply stored or used as energy like other fats. So if it's not converted into that, then it's just going to be used in other fats. Some studies say a diet rich in ALA can reduce risk of death from heart disease. So that's the main thing that it targets. I'm not even going to attempt the name, but it is found in fish oil. EPA. EPA is an omega-3 fatty acid. It's found in the, in the flesh of cold water fish, including mackerel, herring, tuna, halibut, salmon, salmon, cod liver, whale blubber, and seal blubber. It is used as a prescription medicine to reduce triglyceride levels. So hospitals use it as a main go. <clears throat> a main go to. They use it on a regular basis. As a supplement, it is commonly used for heart disease, preventing adverse, adverse events after a heart attack, depression, or menopause. It helps with memory and thinking skills. It can prevent blood from clotting easily, along with pain and swelling. It has many anti-inflammatory properties. DHA. DHA is omega-3 fatty acid. It plays a vital role in your brain and during pregnancy and infancy. It is mainly acquired through diet. It is mainly found in seafood, such as fish, self shellfish, and, and fish oils. It's a component of every cell of your body and vital structural component of your eyes, skin, and brain. It compromises over... It compromises over 90% of the omega-3 fatty acids in your brain and up to 25% of its total fat content. It is found in the gray matter of the brain, mainly the frontal lobes, which are, <clears throat> which are vital during development. DHA deficiencies that are detected early in life have been associated with learning disabilities, ADHD, aggressive hostility, and other disorders. Low levels in mothers are linked to an increased risk of poor visual and neural development in children or in the child that the mother is taking care of. Your brain can have many changes from size, size, weight, and fat content from DHA deficiency. I did not know that. These include altered membrane properties, memory function, enzyme, enzyme activity, and neuron function. Taking DHA as a supplement may help uh, it has been linked to several improvements in memory, learning, and verbal fluency. So the more DHA you have in your system, the better your mind is going to function. You're, the more sharper you're going to be, the better you're going to be able to just think things through, I, I would say. It is said that Alzheimer's patients have low levels of DHA in their brain and liver. Studies have shown that uh, higher blood DHA levels are linked to a reduced risk of dementia and Alzheimer's as well. So basically, patients that, so Alzheimer's patients or dementia patients have very, very low levels of DHA in their brain and liver. I also didn't know it was in there. So it's in a lot of your vital organs, I would say, as far as DHA goes. But I did not know that it was so detrimental to your health and well-being of your mind and your brain. Um, and uh, the other thing is, too, is that your organs, your eyes are connected to your brain which might explain a few things for me because my eyesight is not the best, you know? So, um, and I grew up just having poor eyesight, uh, basically astigmatism though for me. And I noticed that when I start taking fish oil again or some sort of a EFA capsule, um, my, my vision tends to get a little bit better and my eyes aren't technically damaged, but they are healthy. It's just that due to the strain, uh, with my eyes that, uh, they're in the state that they're in. So anyways, guys, this video is long enough. I just wanted to say thank you for watching. And that is the scoop on the EFA capsule in the daily stack. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great night.